Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well, tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some painting of the track. So I have a whole bunch of track and I figure, you know, I might as well take this opportunity and I can show a bunch of different techniques on how to, how to paint track. So tonight what we're going to do is one style. And this is probably going to end up into like a series of videos. So if you don't see the style that you like on this video, it might be on the next one, it might be on the one after that or the one after that. So like everybody knows, there's a lot of different ideas out there on, on how to paint track. So I figure, you know, what the heck? I've got a whole bunch of track. Let's just try painting different styles, right? So, hey, let's do this. All right, so here's the layout. And like you can see, I've got a lot of track that I can play with. So we can do a bunch of different effects. And the nice thing about having so much track and whatnot is that I can make it blend as far as all the different techniques that we can use. So what I have planned tonight is we're gonna go ahead and take care of this hairpin area in here. And one of the things about this hairpin is that it comes down a hill and when you come into this hairpin being an r1 for scale electric and it's a squeeze track um you know you, you got to slow down quite a bit to come around it and the cars want to kick out and whatnot so just to kind of make this a little bit user friendly what we're going to do tonight is a technique using an aerosol so an actual rattle can type of effect and it looks you know like this it's a kind of it you know it looks like concrete it's pretty cool um but it also gives a texture and it's a rough surface so it'll help a lot with grip and the the track that i use is is scale electric and like carrera and everything else you know it, it is a little bit slick so being as such i want to add a little bit more grip here so i uh i don't come off the track is easy. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get this area painted. So next thing I'm gonna do is yard this track out and we come back, I'll have it on my table and we can start doing the prepping process to get ready to get some paint on that track. So yeah, let, let's get busy. So we're back and I went ahead and have our piece of track taken out of the track, or <laughs> taken out of the layout. So. I figure, you know, this is a good time also, so I can show you how to go ahead and remove the, uh, oh, well, the, the, the dye or, you know, whatever, the markings that they go ahead and put on some of the tracks. So a lot of times you might have like a, a checker, you know, like for the start and finish line or something like that. And I'm like on these hairpins, it will have these yellow strips that go right down into the hairpin, just kind of a warning, you know, telling you, hey, there's a hairpin coming up. So if you don't really care for those, well, I'm gonna show you how to take them off. So, and quite honestly, I'd like to get rid of them anyway when I do my painting because if, I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear that when I go across this, you know, you can hear a change in, in the sound. Well, also at the same point in time, this actually has filled in the grit a little bit or the texture on the track itself. So if you do not take this off and you decide to go ahead and paint, and if you're doing kind of a light, you know, type of effect, first off, this yellow is gonna wanna bleed through. Okay, so that's, that's strike one. Strike two is even if you got it all covered, there is going to be a little bit of a difference between the two because you're gonna have an area with with nothing on it, so a little bit more texture, and then that's gonna be filled in a little bit. So you may not catch it like looking directly at it, but if you're looking at an angle, you might still see the shadowing underneath the paint that you put down your track. So 
to alleviate that, we're gonna take this stuff off. So what I'm going to use is just a simple lacquer thinner, okay? And this just virgin solvent lacquer thinner. Now, being that this track is plastic and lacquer thinner is a pretty aggressive solvent, you, you wanna be gingerly with it, meaning we don't wanna just dump lacquer thinner on it and scrub it because the lacquer thinner will actually start to melt this plastic and we don't want that. We just want to get this off. So what I have is just a little clean rag and I'll put some on here, set that down and we're just going to go ahead and wipe it on here. Now this yellow, you can see, I mean, it just penetrates, right? So what we're going to do is just keep on working this and I'm not loading it up. I'm keeping it moist, but I'm, I'm not, you know, loading it up a whole bunch. And you can, you can feel that it'll start coming off. And if you, if you use too much, it'll actually start to make the track like sticky. And uh, we don't want that. We just want to go ahead and take this yellow off. So this is a good way of doing it. And this will just take that, you know, that transfer right off your track. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on doing this and I'm going to remove all this yellow. When we come back, we'll go ahead and get the track all cleaned prior to doing any type of sanding on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this removed. We come back, we'll take it to the next step. There we go. It's all cleaned off. So if you wanted to just remove those from your track, it's a good way of doing it. Pretty painless. So and again, you want to wear some gloves because it's, you know, dealing with chemicals and stuff. You don't need to get that stuff in your system. So next thing we need to do is go ahead and get this track ready to paint. Now, one thing about plastics, okay, and it's no different if it's a, a plastic that's just being casted for just a little piece or track itself. Um, is what they have on it is a release agent. And a release agent is a type of chemical that's put down onto it so that it will not stick to the molds, okay? You can see on the back side. I mean, a lot of times if you feel the track, you can feel something on it. Well, that's release agent that is in, 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 ugh. <laughs> it's impenetrated into the plastic itself, okay? So there are ways of, of getting that agent out of there. And one of the reasons why we want to do that is trying to remove it is that it can, like release agent, release the paint off of the track. So what we need to do is treat that release agent so that our track is clean. And one thing about painting is, is cleanliness is everything. If we don't do our prep work correctly and we just go ahead and say, okay, I'm just gonna clean my track and I'm just gonna paint it. Well, what happens over time is that the chemical doesn't have anything to adhere to. And being that these tracks are, you know, they're flexible and everything else, it will start to release and start to chip off and everything. So we don't want that to happen. We want our track to look as nice today as it does, you know, a while from now. So. In order to do that, there's a few little steps we need to do. So I used lacquer thinner to clean off the yellow that was on, you know, this track. Now, lacquer thinner is a great way of also treating the plastic. A, it kind of softens it just a little bit. And B, it'll pull that release agent to the surface. Okay, so if we put that on it, so I'm going to take a little bit of lacquer thinner. We're going to put this on the rag and you notice I disconnected it from the other pieces of track. The reason why we want to do that is that we want to make sure we get down on the edges of this too, because if we paint it, say we just treat this, we just treat the, the top and where it joins down inside here, if we don't treat down inside, well, it's going to start to chip. It's going to start to chip from those edges this way. So to be thorough, we want to make sure that we treat the full piece of track. So 
with a little bit of lacquer thinner, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this whole entire piece down. And again, I'm not smothering it, okay? I just have a little bit on the rag, moisten it, and I'm just wiping it on down. And plus, this is gonna clean our surface as well. So we're, we're getting the release agent off of it. We're pulling as much as we can out of it. And then we're also, you know, cleaning it as well. So we just wanna make sure we get all these different edges. So there we go, pretty simple. Just real quickly go over it you'll feel it it'll it'll be different okay you'll you'll notice that the surface um it's kind of like when you clean your skin you know after you've been working in the garage and stuff all day and you clean your hands and the but you really use that cleanser and it gets in there and it pulls all those oils out same thing here you'll feel it there will be a difference to it once you have that feel then you know okay cool you know i've got that release agent out of my plastic so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these when we come back we'll now start to go ahead and protect our rails and get our sanding going so now we're back we have our tracks it's all clean and again feel it you can feel that it is different after you treat it with a little bit of lacquer thinner and it will get that release agent out so Next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and protect our rails before we do any sanding on this. We don't want to sand our rails because these actually have on, on scale electric track, it's a metal rail, but it actually has a, um, a coating over the top of it. Okay. And I believe it's like nickel or I can't remember exactly what the coating is, but we don't want to disturb the coating if we, if we can, can, if we can help it. Right. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take some quarter inch masking tape and I'm just going to go ahead and mask these off so that when we scuff it, we won't be scuffing our rails as well. Now, again, if, if you have Carrera track, Carrera is using stainless steel. So again, you don't not want to go ahead and scratch that because that is, especially on Carrera, because if you scratch through on uh, stainless steel, the coating, you're going to expose it underneath you're just asking for future problems. So best way to do it is to protect the rail. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take some um, quarter inch masking tape here. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and mask this down right here on the side. And the rail sits down to the plastic. So if we just take our thumbnail and put it right down here on the side of it, we can get that to, to mask off real nice. So unfortunately, this guy is just a wee bit too small. So I'm going to have to use two lengths of masking tape. So I'll do it on one side and then on the other side. And we'll get that masked. So there's one. I got to do these and all the other ones. We come back. We'll have it all masked. All right, so we're back and I have my rails all masked off. So now what I can do is go ahead and start prepping the surface as far as giving a little bit of a braid. Now, what I'm using is a gray Scotch-Brite and Scotch-Brite is kind of like a scouring pad. Now, there are different colors, meaning different grits of, of Scotch-Brite. You'll have, there's green, there's brown, there's red and there's the gray and the gray is kind of a real fine coarse. Now you could use the red on it. It's a little bit more aggressive, but I prefer using the gray because the gray isn't going to put any gouges into it. The red being that it is a little bit more aggressive can, if you're, if you're really scrubbing into it, it can leave marks And the gray. Gray is not going to do that for you. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take some, Isoprol pulp, you know, I can never say this, IPA alcohol, how's that? I'll put it up in the caption because I just, I just get tongue tied when I try to say this, this isoprol, I'm just not even going to try it, but what we're going to do is I'm going to use some of this alcohol and I'm going to put on the scotch Bright. so, and what this is going to do is it's going to give a little bit more of cleanliness. We're still working on trying to get some of this release agent out, even since we use the, uh, the lacquer thinner on it. 
But what we're gonna do with this is just go ahead and give it a good sand. And you notice I'm going one direction. I'm not going all over the place. I'm just kind of keeping it one direction because I don't want a bunch of different lines if it does go in there a little bit. And if you're sanding it, you can see just lightly, just lightly um, little scuffs that it's putting into it. So, and make sure that I get this all scuffed. And the nice thing about the alcohol is it's staying wet. And the reason for that, why we like that, is because what it's doing is while we're sanding it and uh, putting a little bit of a scratch into it for a mechanical bond, is that this is staying moist and soaking down into it and it's gonna bring that release agent to the surface. So, let me go ahead and I'll get this. I'm going to use a little bit more and drying out. And we don't want it to dry. We want it, want it to stay wet. So, when we're like that, we get this all scuffed. Just hang on with me for a sec. So, we'll get that. Make sure we get our edges right over here. We're going to take a rag and go ahead and wipe this off. And what this is doing is it's cleaning the surface, but it's also going to take a little bit more of that release agent out of our plastic. And I'll show you once this dries what it looks like. And you'll notice that the color of it will actually change a little bit because we're just drawing more of those oils out of the top of this. So let's see here see this like so it's already starting to dry but if we put this up against the other track I don't know if you can see it on the camera but this has a little bit of a doling not only because we scuffed it but also because it's pulling a little bit more of that release agent out so that's what we're going after so we want to get that out of there so also we want to go ahead and hit all our edges so again with your scotch bright just go in and we'll just go ahead and scuff our edges real quick. And that way when we paint it, we want our paint to be on the edge here. So, you know, it just makes it look a little bit better. It doesn't have a big black strip on the side of your track. So, and then we want to get down here on the sides just so if we have a little bit of paint that gets down in here, it has some adhesion so it won't flake off so go ahead and get that sanded and then again i'm just going to wipe this off and it's getting that release agent out and there we go so we have that piece sanded i've already sanded my corners i just have this last straight to do and you can see it's just a little bit different okay so, I'll go ahead and sand this. When we come back, we'll clean it one more time, and we're ready to paint. All right, so we're back, and I went ahead and unmasked my rails, so I'm getting that masking off of there. And the reason why I just masked that is for protection when I sand everything, okay? Because, again, we don't want to scuff up our rails if we can help it. So, next thing we need to do is just go ahead and get this track all assembled. So we get it all assembled again. And ah, you need to turn it around the correct way. It doesn't go that way. There we go. So now that we have our track all assembled, what we need to do is go ahead and clean it one last time. So what I am going to do is just use, oh, come on, where did I put my glue? So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down one last time with some alcohol and I'm gonna use two rags so I'm gonna have a wet rag and I'm gonna have a dry rag okay so what we're gonna do is go ahead wet this down I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this over the whole entire surface and while it's still kind of moist I'm going to come in with my dry rag, and we're going to go ahead and dry it out. And you might say, wow, that's real, you know, it's 
kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And one thing about painting is that 90% of painting is prep. So if, if your prep isn't done thoroughly, you could do the, the most beautiful paint job in the world, but it may not last. It's not gonna last for you. So the big thing is prep. We just wanna make sure that our prep is, is done properly and uh, is clean. We just wanna make sure that it is clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this all down. You notice it's a wet rag, come back with my dry. And that just ensures that we have a good, clean surface that our paint is gonna stick to. So now at this point, what we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my pieces are all nice and tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and mask off my rails. So we come back, I'll have my rails all masked, and now we can start painting our track. All right, so I have this all masked off, have my rails masked off, and I have some tape down here at the edge because I don't want this uh, the paint that I use to go ahead and load up this edge so when I join the other track, you know, I want a nice fit. So what we're gonna use tonight is it's by Krylon, it's stone, it's called coarse texture. And what it is, it, it looks like this, it looks like asphalt. It's really cool and it's, you know, it's coarse and everything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and spray this to make it look like that. So ideally is that you wanna paint your track <laughs> before you do all your scenery, right? This is kind of a, a last minute thing. I thought, you know, I've been kicking the idea of painting track for quite a while. And I've been building the layout at the same time. And now everything's kind of built and I'm looking, yeah, I should probably start painting the track. Well, ideally is that you'd want to go ahead and paint your track first. So just kind of keep that in mind. This is, this is going to be a little bit more difficult of a, a situation when we go through these videos. But so what we're going to do with this, we're just going to go ahead and put on a light coat. So just a light coat to start out with. Okay. You can see how I'm just kind of blowing it off the edge. Make sure I get our edges down in here and the inside, get that side. And there we go and that's our first coat and what I'll do is I'll let that go ahead and flash and this generally takes about two to three coats to get a real nice solid solid look to it so I'm gonna let that sit and I'll come back put a couple more coats on it and uh, we come back we'll see how she looks well hey it's got paint on it so it, it looks pretty cool, you know, the, the way that the, the texture is and everything else with it, you know, it really kind of looks like asphalt, you know, turns out really cool. So what we need to do now is since this is in a corner and I have around the outside on this corner, I have that MDF board. I went ahead and made the curbing around here. While I, while I was spraying this, I also sprayed those areas. So. What we need to do is go ahead and get this back on the track. And the next thing that is on the agenda is that we need to go ahead and get our borders on the outside, the white paint that they would put on the outside lanes of the track just to show the boundary. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and fit this back onto the track. And we come back, we'll go ahead and get those boundaries painted on this and uh, I think we need to uh, we need to put in a little bit of a racing line, and uh, you know not everybody makes a corner, so we're gonna need to put some skid marks on this too. So there's still a bit to do, but yeah, it's coming along, and you know it's starting to look uh, a little bit more realistic than just regular stock track. So 
when we come back we'll have this on the on the layout and uh yeah we'll see how she looks so we have it down on the layout you can see how it it's all goes in and I went ahead and painted up the hill as well just to kind of blend it out so up on the hill I don't know if you can make it out I've already put in the white borderline on both sides of the track here and what I want to do is carry that through and then down on this edging that I built with that MDF I'm gonna go ahead and carry that line around the outside of this and then obviously on the inside I'm gonna come right into the inside as well so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and take this quarter inch tape and uh, if I can find the end of it and take off a chunk. And what I'm doing now is I'm desensitizing the tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run my hand down it a couple times and it just kind of flattens out the stickiness of it just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of line this up and then bring it down through here sometimes it's a little bit difficult bring this down and then we're just going to work this line so that we have this edging and some of this might be a little bit thick and what i'll do is i'll come back with a little bit of brown that i have for the earth color and i will just kind of even it out a little bit because this is not quite the bend I want to make. So let's see here. If we bring it up just a little bit right in here, work this corner. There we go. And just follow this around. So now I'm just going to go ahead, put this tape down, and then this will be my hard line as far as the white on the border so i'll just bring that down through and just kind of keep the same distance going all the way around the perimeter of my corner and there we go so i'm going to go ahead and outline around here and then i'll just go ahead and outline around the inside when we come back we'll go ahead and get that white down for our border We have our masking all done, so we have it all outlined so we can go ahead and put in our, uh, our border. And what I'm going to use is just an acrylic paint, and this is an off-white. I don't want something that's going to be real brilliant white. I'd like to have something that looks like it's a little bit weathered. Um, so what I'm going to use is just this oyster white acrylic and just a regular little brush here. And what the idea is with the tape, for one thing, it, it gives you a nice clean edge. But on the other, this is kind of hard to do and show you guys, but how I'm going to paint this is I'm gonna come off the tape, okay? So I don't wanna go ahead and jam into it because this texture is, is porous, okay? So it's, it's got a little bit of texture to it. If I take my paint and put it right down into it, there's a good chance of what's gonna happen, it's gonna bleed under that, that tape. So in order to kind of work with that, with a, a, a substrate that you know has some texture to it, is to just go ahead and draw the paint off the edge. Okay, you notice I'm on the tape and then I'm drawing off the edge. So what that's gonna do is gonna allow this tape to work as a hard line okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and just draw it off and try not to get it on my scenery but if it happens it happens we'll just have to come back in and touch it up a little bit so if you can see how that works i'm just drawing it off and i'm just going to keep on working this around on this one side so I'm just going to keep on doing that, going on through with all these lines, which looks like it's going to take me a little bit. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and see if we can't get some tire marks and stuff on this. Now we have our white line around the, the perimeter of our track. Next thing we need to do is what I want to do is go ahead and kind of put in a racing line as far as, you know, the apex of the corner where the cars have been going around the, this corner. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use some acrylic 
uh, satin black, okay? And the nice thing about the satin is that it's a little bit diluted, so it's not gonna be real strong. Um, another black you could use would be like a weak black. And what, how I'm gonna apply it is I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a bigger stiff bristle brush and we're gonna do kind of like a uh, a dry a dry brush on this to create that. Now, another way of creating it would be with a an airbrush, and you could go ahead and just put a little bit of this in there and airbrush it through. But I'm gonna go ahead and show the brush method on this corner. Maybe in a later video, I'll go ahead and and show the airbrush. But not everybody has an airbrush, so. I think it's a good idea that we just go ahead and show what we can do with just a stiff bristle brush. So what I'm gonna do is uh, give this guy a good little shake and we're gonna go ahead and put it on a board here, just like so. So I'm not gonna use very much, just a little bit. And why I have it on the board here is so I can draw it out, okay? And I can go ahead and get that dry brush effect, much like how I do my, my stone work or anything else, and I come back with the white, and we do the highlights on the stone. Well, it's kind of the same concept that we're gonna do, except for this time, we're gonna go ahead and put it down on the track. So, being that an apex is gonna be from the outside, kind of moving in and going around, keeping that in mind, and this is gonna be our tight area I'm just gonna go ahead and use this, just settle and bring it out. And all this is gonna do is just darken that area just a little bit to give the effect of an actual racing line going through there. I mean, it's already starting just to show just a little bit. And we don't want it overpowering we just want to give it that subtle effect. So just kind of work that down, kind of work your line and bring it through. And you notice I have my rail still masked off. So I'm not getting any paint on those. I just want to go ahead and work it. So, let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's getting there. Let me do a little bit more. I want to make this make this line a little bit a little bit wider, being that we're coming into a hairpin. Come out here just a little bit. Drag it through. Just like so. And there we go. So we got the first part of our of our race line going through. I'm gonna go ahead and carry it around to the other side over here. So if I just kind of move the camera kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at so you can see how that's just kind of taking shape right there so then i'll just go ahead and carry it up and complete the apex off the other side there so i'm gonna go ahead and keep on doing that and uh when we come back we'll uh see if we can't put some skid marks in this thing Okay, so we have our racing line in. Now what I want to do is put in just a few little skid marks into this area. So what I have is just a little chassis here. And I'm going to use the same black that we have before. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get this on the tires with this brush. And I don't want it to be like loaded up on one side. So we'll make sure that it's kind of spread around here. And we just kind of work it like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these tires right here as our template. So what I mean by that is that once we have the, the, uh, the paint on the tire, 
and we have our racing line right here, what we can do is go ahead and use this guy, bring him down in, and we can get some different effects here as far as a little bit of a little bit of tire in there. Now, if it doesn't come all the way through, you can take your brush and just go ahead and lightly hit it, and you'll see where the the outline is of those of those tire the tire marks that we just put in there. So if we just kind of play around just a little bit, we can give the effect that we have, you know, a little bit of heavy braking and whatnot going in. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this a little bit, maybe do a little bit on this one side, and uh, we'll unmask it and we'll see what she looks oh, like. There we go, we went ahead and I have some skid marks coming in, a little bit out here. This guy got a little wild, came out a little bit. And we even put some shift marks coming out. So when like they're grabbing gears coming out of the corner, breaking loose. So yeah, hey, it looks pretty cool. It's a cool way to just kind of finish off your scenery. You know, um, what just regular black track looks like next to, to this. I mean, there's, that looks pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll wrap everything up. And uh, we'll take one last look at another video and uh, hope you guys liked it so like I said at the beginning this is gonna be kind of a series of a bunch of different techniques on painting tracks so we got one down and we got a whole bunch more to go and uh, it was suggested to me to try to maybe figure out something for the guys that have the routed tracks as well so I'm gonna play around with some MDF and uh, see if I can't figure out something for those guys too so yeah, yeah, we need to do that. So there we go. So turned out cool. One video down. If you like it, like it, share it with others, and subscribe to my channel. And next time on Boone's Slot Car Garage, well, we're going to be playing with some more track. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs>
Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.